Hi, comic book fans, and welcome to another suddenlycomics.com video. And it's a Monday, so it's the price variance. And um, so um, I'm been basking in glory all week because I won uh, the last cover challenge. Um, <laughs> You didn't watch our cover challenge. Go and watch it. That was last week. Don't watch it because it's like Merck winning is not a good thing. <laughs> you know, and I, I don't like to gloat. I don't like to gloat. Right. Okay. Um, so it's uh, Alan and I are doing a spec video. We don't often do spec videos. We did one at the beginning of 2022, about six months ago. Um, and we'll probably review those at the end of the year to see who did best, Alan or me. Uh, so we're mid-year, so we're doing about one spec show every six months. So we don't do these often. So, you know, make the most of them. Uh, there were some great specs on Alan's channel, some really good ones. Um, so go and check that out. Um, and we're going to do three more spec comics each. Um, I, Alan said he's going to pick a different theme. So I don't know what he's going to do. So it's over to Alan. Okay, you're going to like this theme. I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, you're going to like this theme. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's my theme too. Um, uh, so this is something that I'm just showing this as an example. Uh, okay. <laughs> do you know it already? You're going to do UK price variance. UK price variance is the theme. So um, <laughs> You're right. This, I not, do like the theme. Yeah. So... I've done some research. Mark knows a little bit about it. Not much, but a little bit. <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, so, yeah. So, price variants do matter. So, um, if you look at Canadian price variance versus U.S. price variance, it's ratio of 1 to 10. And as a result, uh, the Canadian price variants are usually anywhere from 25% to 50% higher in value than the American edition. Something like that, it's, it's kind of pretty amazing because it's, it, they're rare, so people gravitate to them. Um, the same goes for um, newsstand versus direct. The, the newsstand is rare, especially in high grades. I think a lot of people that get into the buying the newsstands don't understand that, that sometimes it's actually less practical to buy the newsstand don't buy the newsstand if it's a low grade yeah i mean if it's, if it's a 1975 then all of them were newsstands exactly so the point is like and i've seen those actually sell for higher even though they they really shouldn't okay um so the thing is with uk price variance it's one in a hundred ratio yeah and we've checked that many times and i i see it over and over again and sometimes I've seen as much as one in 200 yeah. uh, on some of them, yeah. uh, which is crazy. And it, like, I, I, I asked you this on your channel mm -hmm. because you, you did a show on it where you were talking about it. And I, I asked, do you think it's because it's so hard to send books over to CGC? And, and you know, and you gave me a pretty good answer. So I, I kind of, I, I think that's, a, you yeah, know, you I gave mean, me a book. You know, I know lots of people in the comic community and they send comics off for grading. Yeah, and if they're yeah. a great, yeah. they're the same as the American comic community. If you're a grader, mm -hmm. you're a grader. If you're not a grader, you're not a grader. And if you're the person who, I mean, I have a lot of comics that are not graded. So I do have a Fantastic Four 48 sure. in a medium to high grade that's not graded. And I'm not going to mm -hmm. send it off for grading in the near future. But mm -hmm. um, I would say the percentage is about the same across the across the spectrum. It's not difficult to get comics graded from the UK. You can you can mm -hmm. send them to an agent, you can go to a show and you can give give them to CGC at some of the big comic shows. Um, there's a there's a guy who's an agent for CBCS, relatively easy to send it to him. So it's not that difficult to get comics graded. Um, and I don't think that is a cause of the difference. I think the, yeah. I think that rarity is genuine, and it, because I've seen it across so many comics, if it was just one or two, yeah, yeah. one or two hot ones, yeah, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe there may be a couple less graded, but it's you know mm -hmm. instead of being one in a hundred, it might be one in eighty, you know, it's that's pretty pretty okay. telling, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rare. So so that that ratio to me, and I've I've discussed this, you've discussed this. They were first, I think they were the first true first prints. Yes. Um, you know, and, um, you know, the that to me is important, actually, that it is the first thing that was printed. Um, so I, I think 
for all those reasons, these are primed to spec. And they're, the reason I like them especially is I'm cheap. And right now, these books are cheaper than their American counterparts. So they're, they're more rare and yet cheaper, yeah. which it doesn't make any sense. I just right. picked up um, like an Avengers number five, UK price variant for a third of the going rate. Yeah, crazy. It was, and I checked the census. There's five on the census. <laughs> it's just like it's just like they don't exist. It's like a rare book, um, and it's you know it's one of those things like why you know yeah, you know well, you know. So I'm, um, I, you saw my video. I picked up five early-ish Fantastic Fours, and I, I they're all UK price variants. I will actually mm -hmm. go and look if and and I will not buy you. And now I'm just buying UK price variants for my early Fantastic Fours. And mm -hmm. I picked up one, and I think I paid a third of third of fair market value for a, a really nice high grade, um, you know, early-ish Fantastic Four. It's crazy, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but there we go. So yes, I think this is a real opportunity. Okay, so that's my first <laughs> first spec, and it's not really just a particular book. It's yeah. UK price yeah. variants. Oh, okay, well, so that's interesting. Right. Okay. So <laughs> next, right, I'm going to do. So my next one is, is, this is an interesting one. DC are hugely undervalued compared, <laughs> to, uh, compared to Marvel, okay? Alan and I are going to do the same thing again now. He's going to do... <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we're almost connected. He's like my, my brother in Canada. We sort of have a twin <laughs> effect, right? Um, so I think getting buying the DC sort of blue chip keys is a no-brainer they they will come up it, it might not be next year might not be the year after now actually this one i'm going to show you has gone up and just keeps going up um it is almost defies gravity this it hasn't suffered from price reduction in the last year um and i think it's just going to keep going up it's gonna it's one of those it's a dc key that just seems to keep going um, mm -hmm. And it's this one. It's uh, Batman 232. Um, oh, yeah. The first appearance of uh, Raz al Ghul. Great mm -hmm. cover art by Neil Adams. Um, and this comic is not, you know, this isn't going up because of any movie that's coming out. Uh, you know, it, it's it's just a great but blue chip. Well, it's, I think it's going up partly because of Neil Adams as oh, well. Uh, I'd give it, Adams, you'd give it that. Neil Adams was Neil Adams. I know, I know, but yeah, I think, I think that might have had some effect. Um, yeah, uh, but you know, but perhaps drawn more people in to recognise these contributions. Sure, sure. Um, but regardless of that, this this comic is, uh, I think, you, you need to get this before it gets out of reach. Um, this is, um, you know, in a highish grade. This is now over, you know, fifteen hundred dollars. Um, so. Yeah, that's my that's my spec recommendation. Grab it before it gets out of uh, reach. Yeah, I mean that's that's a great book. Um, like I, you know, I have a copy of it as well. Yeah, um, yeah I, I always saw that as like I looked at the numbers. I actually like did like these kind of Marvel versus DC. Yes, kind of you did. Yeah, videos. you did it. Yeah, and I did. I wish I kind of kept with it, but I didn't. But um, the point is. When I looked at the numbers, the, the census numbers were always half. There was half as many uh, DC books compared to Mar uh, Marvel of equivalent character, like Darkseid versus uh, Thanos. You know, yes, that I kind of level. when you did that. That was a good video. Yeah. So, so what I noticed, though, is not only was it half as many of them, but uh, the price was what you was almost the opposite it was almost like two to three times more expensive for the marvel one yeah. than the dc one and yeah. to me they were equivalent level characters it's not like you know one was like oh really really hot compared to some other one they were as hot as each other so so my point is like um i think they're they're easily five to ten times undervalued you know it's it's that much of a dramatic uh, thing and i i, I think so I kind of picked the same theme, that, that same idea of <laughs> DC books. Um, I tried to pick one. I've shown this one before, actually, as a spec, and I'm going to show it again. 
Um, and it's because I, I, it's not that I'm necessarily expect, uh, expecting on this particular book. It is the DC theme. So I, I, I'm recommending, so I'm in this video, I'm doing three themes. Okay. So the next theme is DC books. So um, I'm recommending this one. Okay. So this is Captain Marvel 26. Uh, this is the first full appearance of um, Mr. Mind. Oh yeah. And if you want, you get this other one which is the first cameo of Mr. Mind, okay? So this is 22, I believe. Yeah, 22. So 22 and 26. And the reason I'm recommending these is that they're, I know it's not truly DC, <laughs> okay? I get that. Um, but it's DC Fawcett, owns, isn't it? yeah, Fawcett. DC owns all the characters from Fawcett. So, you know, technically it's DC now. Um, no, and the reason I'm... I, think, I, I don't think that's right. I think they own Captain Marvel. I think, because when Fawcett went under, DC... I know, they sold some rights to certain... Marvel, went, Marvel noticed that Captain Marvel had gone out of copyright and they picked and up... And they picked up the name, yeah. DC, after that, then went and picked up the rights to all the other Fawcett properties. Yeah. Yeah, so it was kind of weird. So, yeah, it, there's some weirdness there because... Uh, uh, it was like sort of a defunct company for a little while. Yeah. And then DC bought it basically, uh, bought the characters. Um, yeah, but the point is, uh, I, I, I show that one as a DC character, <laughs> because even though it technically isn't the DC character. Um, but uh, the reason I show that one is I wanna, sh I, I wanna show things that are still undervalued. Yeah within the DC sphere that have properties that are coming out. Shazam 2 is coming out soon. Um, one of the things that I always like where they hint at future potential bad guys. And at the end of Shazam 1, they, the, the case that showed Mr. Mind, he was actually in the first movie, was broken. And so Mr. Mind is out loose now. So, that, so it means that he's probably going to be a character that appears in the next uh, movie, I think. You know, you always want to have those connections, right? So I, I, I think it's a good spec. Um, but also I recommend as a theme, just like you said, uh, rec uh, I recommend buying all the blue chip keys for DC. Um, if you can't afford the golden age, go with the silver age. So get the first penguin, get the first Joker. The first Joker is one that is insanely undervalued. Most people don't even know what it is. Do you know what it is? I don't know what it is. An early Batman, I would have thought. It's actually World's Finest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's, I, I've got, I think it's issue 40 something, 44 or something like that. So it's, it's one, it, it doesn't even, you can't tell that it's a Joker one yeah. because uh, it's like Batman and Robin on, uh, Batman and Superman on the cover. And then it's like a melted chest, like a, like a box that's melted. Okay. Um, that's the cover. I just can't remember the issue number, but um, that's the first Silver Age appearance of Joker. And it's one that nobody knows about. And to me, Joker is kind of like the biggest villain <laughs> in DC. He is the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, it's just, you know, all these other ones, like the first Penguin, the first uh, Two-Face, the first whatever, yeah, um, they're all really expensive. Yeah, 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 yeah. But this one is just like, and it, they're not as big of a character. It's it's crazy. So yeah, uh, that would be my recommendation. I think it's forty four. World's finest forty four. Just you, you can look up the cover. Yeah, yeah, you can later in the edit maybe throw it up. Yeah, I can put it up in the edit. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. So my next one is um, this is the I've been specking on this character for about two years now, and it's paying off. The, the everything associated with this character is now rising. These, this has not, these have not dipped. Um, he's, he's pure gold um, at the moment, and it's uh, Submariner. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, this is a great one. This is from the uh, first self titled series. Uh, this is Submariner 5, great John Buscema art. This is the first appearance of Dr. Dorcas and the first appearance of Tiger Shark. Mm -hmm. Tiger Shark was an Olympic uh, swimmer and Dr. Dorcas turned him into Tiger Shark 
so he could use him as a as a, a creature to expand his empire. Uh, so yeah, um, and all things Submariner are hot because uh, we're pretty sure we're going to get the Submariner in the uh, in the next uh, Black Panther movie. Um, I think it's been confirmed, actually. I think, yeah, I, we see, we've actually had some images as well. Yeah. He, he, I think he's even got the little wings on the bottom of his feet. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that, <laughs> which would be really cool. I think that'd be so awesome. Um, so, yeah, my second... So those of you who follow me know that my two favourite comic book characters are Submariner and Doctor Doom. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I had to put a submariner in there. These, these submariners from the first series, the art is fantastic. John Buscema. Yeah. Um, the colours are great. Um, they're not, and they, you know, you go back two years, you could have got this for 20, 10, 10, 20 dollars. You know, I, I think I forgot how much I paid for it. I, I got a slabbed one, like a 6 0. I think I paid just under a hundred dollars. Yeah, which it. that now you won't get it for that now. That'll be about two, yeah. two, 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 two. I only got it because I love the cover. Yeah, it's a great cover. I yeah. just love the cover. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. There's a load of these submariners in that for in the first thirty odd, uh, where the covers are just fantastic, uh, yeah. and you know the colours hold up really well. You know, if they've not faded, they're, they're really strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think it's, who's this down here? This blue lady is that? Um, uh, I forgot her name. Is it um, Lady Dorma? I think it's Lady Dorma. I think it's Lady Dorma. Yeah. I think that like that. becomes his wife, I think. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. there we go. That's uh, my second spec pick, Submariner number five, first appearance of Tiger Shark. Great, great spec. That's, yeah. I think that's a book uh, that's a great spec, not just because of Submariner, but it's a classic cover. Oh, I mean, the artwork. That's actually been homaged a bunch of times, too. It's just a classic I mean, cover. This, this, this sort of Submariner coming down here with all these bubbles. Yeah. Around him it's just yeah it's just so great yeah okay now so i'm doing three different themes okay <laughs> so my my first so you, theme you've was specced about two thousand comics so far that's what i try to do i i i go for quantity <laughs> quantity more than quality um so i i spec on the price variance i spec i spec on dc comics in general yeah uh now i'm going to spec on a different theme um this is a really weird one this is nostalgia ah okay yeah, good and one. okay this is one that you're gonna be like what what is this okay so this is <laughs> amazing hero swimsuit special 92 you're probably like okay what well, how does this relate to nostalgia well this is a very undervalued book uh that has the first appearance of brendan stimpy oh okay yeah okay yeah. It's it, it's got two panels uh, where like it's a it's like a pin. This is a pinup kind of style yeah. book, and it has two like pinups of Ren and Stimpy. Ah, okay. So you know it's kind of cool. Yeah, no, um, it's cool. Yeah. And there's like a, I see. I'm trying to get into that concept where people look for cult followings, and there's a cult following for Ren and Stimpy. It's like one of those characters that they're you know that people kind of love. And, you know, it's very nostalgic from the 90s. And I think if you look at the people that were alive in the 90s, they are kind of coming into money now. Yeah, they're hitting their 30s. <clears throat> yeah, they're hitting their 30s, maybe for early 40s. Um, and this is a book that once they realize what it is, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a book you can pick up for about 10 to $15. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a it's kind of a major key in my opinion that it is this first appearance of um, like a popular nineties character. So, um, so I, I was looking into a lot of this nostalgia thing where you basically find characters that were, you go back always in increments of 30, <laughs> like, you know, and, and because that's the people that'll be old enough now to be kind of nostalgic <laughs> and have money. So, uh, you know, uh, things that were kind of big uh, would have been like Pac-Man or, or uh, like that's more 40 years ago. But, um, you know, 90s things like Ren and Stimpy, uh, Beavis and Butthead and all those kind of books. Right. So. Um, 
Yeah, that's the, reason, that's the reason I'm putting together my uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. Sponge, yeah, I think that's a perfect spec. Um, you know, SpongeBob is probably a better one, in my opinion, because of the fact that it is like um, a character that was popular from our generation yeah. and the generation currently. Yeah. You know, they've had movies since. And yeah. it, it's sort of like it's got it's got multi generations that love it. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, great. I, spec. I did debate bringing one of my SpongeBob's for today. I, I was like, "Oh, he's going to bring his SpongeBob," and I'm going to yeah, be like, "I'm." I, I, I was going to. I just forgot. I was going to bring my SpongeBob. <laughs> Have you seen the SpongeBob um, Bill Shenkovich cover? Not sure. Yeah, it's SpongeBob, and he's 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 got he's holding his arm up, and he's got sort of like three prongs coming out, and it's all kit- kitchen implements, but it makes him look like Wolverine. Oh, wow. And the cover was done by Bill Sinkowitz. Oh, uh, nice. That's the one you need to seek out. It's very rare. They're all really low print runs. Less than yeah, five, yeah. Less than five. That's the weird thing. It's it's so strange that they had such a low print run. Yeah, really like, low. Like, you know, five to 10,000 comics, something like that. Yeah, it's like really oh, low. Than, so the later ones, 4,000. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really crazy. Um, anyway, that wasn't what I got. <laughs> <laughs> Right, this one is absolutely. We talked about comics that have gone down in value. Right, this one peaked last year, May twenty twenty one, at a thousand dollars for a nine point eight. You wow. can currently go and get a nine point eight for three hundred dollars. Okay. Wow. That is some fall off. <laughs> That's a major fall. And what's interesting about this? It got it got it got a second series. This was one where it had a first series on Netflix, and it actually got a second series which hasn't come out yet. Uh, but the comic is now down at less than a third of what it hit at its peak. So I think this is a really good time to pick this up, and it's uh, Sweet Tooth number one. Yeah, I, I expect hard on Sweet Tooth. I love Sweet Tooth. I mean, it peaked at a thousand dollars for a nine point eight. And it's now $300. I actually picked this up. This is not a 9.8. It's probably an 8.5 or a 9.0. But I picked this up in a whatnot auction for $40. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I spec'd on that before any news and stuff like that. Um, I bought the whole the whole run yeah. for like 60 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> well, All just hang on to them because they'll come back up. Yeah. Yeah, they're all high grade too. Yeah. But yeah, that's a great spec. Um, it doesn't even make sense. I don't understand why it dropped so much. It was a great series. I think it's the flipper thing. I think the flippers were just driving it up and up and up and up and up. And after the show went, just all went out. Yeah. Because um, the series was actually good. I, I enjoyed it. Oh, no, I thought it was really good. I watched it. My wife yeah. watched it. She, very unusually, she watched it and she, she enjoyed it too. So and it, yeah. it, it had you know, non-comic book reader appeal. Yeah, appeal, yeah. My wife hates comic books, yeah. like, with, with a passion. Um, and, and she liked Sweet Tooth. So yeah. that, you know, yeah. I mean, that's that's yeah. kind of kind of something. <laughs> so there we go. That's my, uh, that's my third spec. So, yeah, speaking of the wife, actually, I think it would be really fun if we, um, I've seen this done uh, like just as a future video and we don't have to do it next week but future video um uh one of the other channels that i watch he brought his girlfriend his significant other onto uh, the show and asked her about different characters who yeah. are they oh and i think he like really like trained her before because she actually got a lot of them right yeah I think but I-, I was thinking that would be a fun game that we could play with our significant others uh, you, you your wife would win uh, i mean Claire has not, she'd probably be able to oh, Superman and Batman, and that's about it. Oh, that's my wife, too. My wife, she's Korean. <laughs> she's not going to, like, know all this stuff. <laughs> she doesn't know anything. She, like, uh, she really doesn't like that's comics. That's probably a good so. idea. If you can get your wife to do it, I'll probably be, I'll probably convince Claire to do it. But. Yeah, it'd be fun. It'd be, it'd be a fun. We could, we could battle out. You ask my wife one, yeah. I ask your wife one, and, like, you know, kind of battle it out. Yeah. 
be funny. Actually, I do have what I know we said three each. I did actually bring another one. Oh, you brought this four. Pure, oh my is, goodness. This is pure spec, right? This, this is, is bonus, everybody. Bonus, bonus, bonus spec. Bonus spec. Okay. This is we just had Doctor Strange in the multiverse madness. And then the end credit scene we saw clear. Oh, clear. And there are, you know, potentially she could become sorceress supreme at some stage. Um, mm -hmm. This comic is her first. This is where we first see her as Sorcerer Supreme. I think some guy recommended you get that book. Yes. Yeah. Me. <laughs> was it you? Yeah, it was. Yeah. You. <laughs> Not that one in particular, but the other one. The one where it's called Sorcerer Supreme or something. Yeah. But anyway, here we go. I think it's some form of alternative universe but anyway uh cleo does become sorcerer supreme in this earth x. what's that earth x earth x number four i know i don't even know that book to tell you the truth no uh, i th so i that that's uh you know and it's five dollars it's a dollar bin comic yeah mm -hmm. uh, you can find this uh but it's uh it's worth maybe picking up you're not going to lose a lot of money on it if you pay five dollars for it you may be sitting on it in 10 years' time and it's worth $5, but you could be sitting on it in 10 years' time and it's worth $100. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's one of those ones where that's where she becomes Sorcerer yeah, so Supreme. She, first. she becomes Sorcerer Supreme. This is her first appearance as Sorcerer Supreme. I thought it was only in the series that just came out that no, that happened. No, no. Look, this is an alternative. This isn't in Earth 616 or whatever the thing is. This is in. Oh, okay. This is similar to um, What If with yeah. the jane foster one yeah you know where it's like yeah it's it's not in continuity not like in, they always it's not in continuity now i always hate that personally like you know it's not in continuity it's like <laughs> you're a true geek if you say that kind of thing so yeah um <laughs> so yeah okay that's a very cool one i'll have to look for that have so yeah it's worth it's quite a nice cover as well actually it's um so if i can pick that up for a dollar sure why not right exactly it's uh yeah. it's a cheap one yeah okay that's fun okay we hope you've enjoyed uh our spec video and um say goodbye alan goodbye alan that's a lot <laughs>